It is the 11th of the 5th, 2012. And I was doing some research for my climate change update, and I came across a story on any news. Uh, reactor number 3 has doors that should not be disclosed for the issue of nuclear material production. And they have a video enclosed with that. But on the chat board underneath, on the comment board, a poster put out. Let me get down here to it. Tacoma Groove. Now she puts this story together, um, all the pieces together as far as what's going on in Fukushima Daiichi. And uh, if you followed my channel, um, you can kind of let all the pieces fall into place as you hear them. So her post starts, Reactor number one is, in, is on full China syndrome. The fuel has lost all containment in June 2011, melting its way through the bottom of the reactor. It currently sits unmoderated by boron, producing googles of redoncule decay products every hour. This is the real problem. It's leaking directly into the Pacific Ocean via the groundwater channeling. The amount of fuel located within the unit is capable of contaminating all aquatic life within the entire Pacific Ocean species for species. We are now, we are all now talking in talking head modes, but your heads are only repeating the ifs and whens of the mainstream media. Senator Wydell said, you should you should and could easily see that reactor number one has been the primary concern of the Japanese and TEPCO since March 2011. Hence the tent that was erected in 2011, which merely hides the reactor, Unit 1. Uh, if Unit 4 were the primary concern, TEPCO would have built a concrete housing around the reactor to support the unit. Week 1. However, the tent does, does have a secondary purpose, which is trapping open air fission products which undoubtedly hamper the use of robotic cranes, which cannot operate within the vicinity of high gamma radiation environments. So you are right to address reactor number four as a concern to humanity, but your focus is offbeat. Reactor number one is a runaway train. Its containment is so far lost no human has entered nor can enter the facility for a time period of more than two and a half minutes without succumbing to a sudden acute radiation poisoning. Think about that. This is with the additional full radioactive protection. You will die with only a few short minutes. Meanwhile, you will see that TEPCO plans to build a 100-foot wall barrier to contain the ocean oceanic radiation release on site. Why is this more important than concrete steel frame for reactor number four spent fuel pool? Put two and two together. If Reactor 4 was the primary threat, why would TEPCO be building an oceanic barrier instead of cement housing surrounding the reactor spent fuel pools? It is, not a matter of, it is not a matter of budget, it is a matter of need. The, ocean, the oceanic contamination is obviously out of hand. Senator Wydell was not allowed near Reactor No. 1, hence he has no comments or knowledge of the situation. Although I think of him as attempting to wake up the masses, I feel it is time you all woke up to the China Syndrome occurring all year. So please con continue with the work that you do. You are all my heroes in my eyes, but do not follow the MSN. And she provides a bunch of links. Fact 1. Americans knew there was a highly toxic oceanic radiation plume. There, was, there would be a state of panic. The military would need it excess munitions to control the unruly crowds that would be trying to stock up on supplies. This being said, we have seen, we have seen contracts for these munitions. And that's where uh, we saw the stories, uh, they're buying 450 million rounds for Homeland Security. Fact 2. This is very important. Oceanic radiation plume dispersion models show currents carrying the radiation east via the Pacific Drift from the East Honshu Island. While these maps are publicly available, take a look. If the, if the initial contamination was from the March explosions, A, the currents would not continue to have grown in radioactive contamination, B, the radiation would by now have subsided to the floor of the ocean, and C, the radiation would only show, would only show as only a temporary spot on the model, 
which by now would have dissipated. What we are seeing is a constant leak, aka a radioactive river flowing directly into the Pacific Ocean. Deep oceanic uh, contamination was limited to only a few weeks and explosions, then why on earth was this reported in August? China finds 100,000 square miles of radiation in Pacific Ocean up to 300 times higher than normal. Wouldn't the dispersion of the elements show the minimal contamination at this point? Fact 3. The company TEPCO would have no need for a barrier on site. Why build in a rush what you do not need? And how long has the need been for a relevant issue? Are there any other indications that the aquatic radiation releases are plag plaguing the Pacific Ocean? And then she's got a story, TEPCO to begin coating seafloor with cement mixture and linked with photos. If the seafloor was cemented, this w wouldn't this trap the radiation, meaning that there would be no need for a barrier? I uh, use intelligence here. Fact 4 was reported by Fukushima Daily. Cement was drilled in December 2011, showing high gamma levels. The image released to the public spectrum was a cement sample with obvious yellow sediment attached to it. This was yellow cake uranium, which could only have come from a sample of concrete that had direct contact to the corium on, on site. And it's got links to that. Fact 4, steam from reactor's number one basement. With minimal on-site power, an electrical fire within the reactor would be highly unlikely. If so, this is not a candidate for the heat signature below unit number one reactor. Could a fire be the culprit? Being the lower level of the reactor is filled with two plus meters of water, this would also rule out a fire. This is a nuclear reaction, is my opinion, and fusion is my opinion. Uh, the only possible candidate to create the steam plume which was spotted on the ground floor in reactor number one. And then she lists sources from May 29th and 30th. Fact six, the first injury on site in the USA media was a TEPCO employee whom had burned his feet after entering the Unit 1 reactor at Fukushima. These injuries could only be result of a gamma radiation, which penetrates up to six feet of mass. And finally, fact seven. The red substance powder found in Sakura City shows signatures of uranium oxide. The Reactor 1 basement is completely filled with reactor coolant, which is the same color. The below article outlines the highly contaminated water found within the Unit 1 reactor's basement, and she provides links below for that as well, which I will too. Uh, definitely an interesting read, uh, something to check out. It does put the pieces together. Uh, Unit 1 is in full melt through, and uh, it's seeping into the Pacific Ocean, and they're doing what they can to stop it without letting everybody know. Enjoy what you can, everybody. Thanks.